I wonder how um, I wonder how this board does on that gravel over there. I have always been a fan of toys and 3D objects, and now I think oh this is oh. 3D scanners have come a crazy long way. They become extremely fast. So maybe the possibilities of what you can do with 3D scanning has completely opened up with some of the new scanners that have just been released on the market. Matter Informs version 2 just came out and it offers a lot more capabilities with the simple, simple to use interface along with the software. Scanning technology has become faster, it's become more affordable. Let's go check out what the Matter Inform version 2 V2 scanner is capable of. Whoa, ho, ho, it's nice out there, nice out there. Come on, the door shut. I'm Ryan, I have been hacking things my whole life. It is Sunday. It's a beautiful day in North Carolina. I hope you're doing well with where you're at. Did I say I'm Ryan and I'm hacking things my whole life? Well, today is about the Matter Inform V2 scan and about scanning all together. What's really cool about this scanner off the bat, um, I got it to scan in my teeth here. These are my teeth scan. I'm going to show you that in a little bit right after a quick unboxing. These are the ones that I printed which is the resolution's not there, but I'm gonna switch over to an SLA printer, the resin-based printer. I'm gonna start out with an Anycubic Photon S. Not today, but I'm gonna do that in the next video. Okay, so as far as the build goes and the unboxing and things like that, when I got this unboxing, wait, we have to roll the intro. It was unbelievably beautifully packaged. It was a little bit lighter than I thought. I'm like, what? Maybe because I usually equate um, function with weight, but that's just not the case with this scanner. I was really excited to get the version two because I've seen like on Maker's Muse and some other channels that they had looked at the version one and I was thinking, I am definitely sold on this. And then I found out that there was a version two that was actually faster care all the european plugs the adapters were inside of this package there was even a really nice thank you card that really kind of makes a lot actually but that doesn't going to help you with the 3d scan but as far as the entire model and stuff it's unbelievably beautifully designed of course this has been in version one the fact that it folds up and in a maker shop this is really important to keep something this nice away from a lot of dust or debris because I have a lot going on inside of my shop. So for it to pop open is just was an unbelievable cool design feature. I also love the fact in the back here that um, there is a the, the matter and form button is this really glow, this, this uh, light that glows up. I really, really enjoyed um, those little touches that they made. The first scan that I made, um, of course, was these 3D teeth. One of my dream projects, which is my next project, is going to be in-ear monitor. So when they scan the actual ear impression, the silicone mold that's inside of your ear, that they raised it up. Now, I also, this was a successful scan that I got from this, but I also found that if you position something in different areas, you're going to get those structured light rays that are coming out of from this, whatever this mechanism is called, I guess it's the projector, let's call it the projector or the scanning lights. There's two lights that hit it from the side. So it's important that you don't have like a dark area or a dark cavity. Now, in terms of the vernacular and my, how much I know about this, I'm brand new at this, okay? So what I got out of this was incredible for the first shot. The cloud point technology that, 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 that's here right now is unbelievable. The fact that you get, you can go from this, what looks kind of, you know, distorted, the, these cloud points or these facets to this beautiful softened model. And there's tons of different settings that you can go ahead and uh, move back and forth to get 
you um, exactly what you want um, before you go into Fusion 360. So wh what I did is I scanned it. It took around um, 20 minutes to scan this model. Now I'm sure you could trim that up if you knew the settings a little bit more. And I will in future videos, we'll be talking about that. But this is the first initial scan that I'm doing. After I was able to scan it in, I exported it as an STL and I took it into Fusion 360. And in Fusion 360, the first thing you're going to want to do with the current version of that is turn off your history. And then once you get the model in, you want to insert STL. And once you get the model in, you are going to want to um, right click the model in the component editor on the side, the outliner on the left on the left hand side. And you want to go and do the B-wrap. You want to make it into a model. And once it's a model, you can go ahead and do any operations that you want on it. The first time that I did this, I brought in too much geometry. So what I did is I scanned it again, or I went back to my model. I didn't scan it again. I went back to my model in uh, Matter and Form software, and I went ahead and cleaned up that model. I took off the base, I trimmed it up some, and I was able to get a beautiful looking model that had a lot less geometry. When I brought that back into Fusion, it was a lot easier to work with and I did some Boolean operations and I cleaned up the base. Um, I just removed uh, a flat part from the base. Now you can do that inside of the Matter and Form software additionally, but you can also do it in Fusion 360. So if you're interested in a video on how to convert a um, an STL to a mesh, I have one linked below because that's changed in 2019. I kind of just covered it right there, but I have a little bit more of an extensive tip um, if you're interested in that to watch that uh, video down below. So once I got it done, I went ahead and printed it and um, it was pretty successful.